Since 1991, Wayne LaPierre has led the National Rifle Association through an unprecedented period of growth, modernization, and political clout in defense of our Second Amendment rights. In its most recent ranking of organizations that lobby our national leaders, Forbes magazine ranked the NRA as the top most effective group in the country. As a young person who cares about the future of America, I am grateful that the NRA has been helping to preserve our freedom for the past 141 years and stands today as strong as ever. The United States of America is the greatest country the world has ever known. Its greatness stems from its founding upon the recognition that every human being is born with unalienable rights. These rights have been preserved by honorable patriots such as Wayne LaPierre, who recognizes the importance of upholding what our forefathers worked so hard to defend. The Second Amendment of the Constitution is vital to the well-being of our nation. Every American has the right to self-defense and the right of revolution when despotism encroaches on unto our liberties. Wayne LaPierre is a courageous for standing up for these truths, and with the NRA under his leadership, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. In a moment, I will invite Mr. LaPierre to the stage. But first, please join me in watching this brief video. Never fight if you can avoid it. But when you must fight, don't lose. And when nothing less than freedom is at stake, we fight. We're millions of people just like you. We're the longest standing civil rights organization in the U.S. Proud defenders of history's patriots. Protectors of the Second Amendment. Advocating the right to keep and bear arms. Advancing the shooting sports. Championing gun safety, education, and training. Creating a vital legacy by answering freedom's call. And we're growing stronger every day. We are the NRA. And the NRA is you. It is my great honor to introduce Wayne LaPierre this evening and to stand with him and the NRA to fight to keep America strong and free. Please welcome the CEO and Executive Vice President of the NRA, Wayne LaPierre. Thanks, Ashton. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ashton. Thank you. You know, what that video said is really true. NRA's clout comes from people one by one all over this country that are determined not to lose these great freedoms we have. I always say decade in and decade clout. NRA is simply a reflection of where the American public stands on these great issues. Our American culture is deeply embedded in the individual right to own a firearm, and that embeds NRA in every city block all over this country. And that's the basis of where our clout comes from. Thank you for inviting me here tonight to be with you. It's really great that you have so many young people out there tonight. It, uh, yeah, it, it, it really is. It, uh... You know, we often talk about preserving our freedom for future generations of Americans, but that really doesn't mean in the future. It means now. It means in the present. It means all of us doing everything we can to save our country today, each one of us, because today, everything we care about is at stake. If you don't remember anything else I say tonight, mark this down. This is the most dangerous election in our lifetimes. This is a campaign and it's a fight for our country. It's a fight for our values. It's a fight for the freedoms we believe in, all of our Second Amendment liberty, all of the rights we've worked so hard to defend, all of what we know is good and what we know is right about America. All of it could be lost if Barack Obama is reelected. This election, more than any other one I've seen in my lifetime is all or nothing. 
and gun owners everywhere I go are signing up, joining, and donating the cause because they know it. The fight's on. Everything we believe in is at stake and at risk. And I promise you, in this election, the organization I represent, the NRA, is all in. Anyone who looks at this election and thinks gun owners won't make a difference in key states that will decide this election hasn't paid attention to the history of elections in this country. We stand for what America stands for, freedom for each citizen, and we never waver from that cause. That's why more than ever before, and more than anyone else, I believe Americans trust the NRA to stand for what's right and to defend their freedom. Polling has consistently showed that Americans view the NRA more favorably than they view the White House, now, that's a shocker, Congress, or either the Republican or Democratic parties. Just this past April, a Reuters poll came out from Reuters that found that NRA was viewed favorably by 68% of the American public. People have yeah, I mean, those, those numbers, I think they prove what I said earlier. People have found in the NRA what's missing in government and all too often is missing in both major parties these days. An unfailing, unapologetic commitment to telling and fighting for the truth no matter what. On, on the other hand, a recent CNN poll found that, and these numbers are amazing, only 15% of Americans trust our government. They don't trust government because government itself cannot be trusted. They don't trust government because Americans know the difference between the truth and a lie. The truth must be told now because never has American freedom been more disregarded, denigrated, diminished, and often destroyed? All over this nation, people feel it in their heart. They look down when you talk to them. And I know you talk with them just as I do all the time. And what I get is they look down and they kind of shake their heads and they say something's gone terribly wrong in this country. And then they say, I've never been worried about this country until now. Almost every way you look at it, almost every aspect of American freedom is in some state of decline. Just think about it. Our right to speak out, our right to assemble, our right to practice our religion, our right to seek the kind of health care we want for our families. The economic freedom to earn and spend and save, to own our own homes, to buy the kind of food we want, to feed our children, to raise and discipline our kids, even the simple right to fly the American flag. The increasing collapse of American freedom is becoming staggering because by almost every measure, we are less free today than we were a short decade ago. President Obama, he won't tell you that. No politician in either party will tell you that, and neither will the media. They'll all keep spoon-feeding us idle-minded slogans in hopes that we'll ignore the truth. And the truth is this. A complete collapse of political leadership in this country has led to an ever-increasing collapse of freedom in America. Never has honest leadership been more lacking than in the Barack Obama White House. A, a second Obama term is the single greatest threat in history to our freedom and our Second Amendment rights. He would deny that because he wants gun owners to sit this election out. The media would deny it because they know gun owners can make the difference in defeating President Obama in all those key battleground states. 
But no one can deny the truth. Obama's already signed on to destroying the Second Amendment. He endorsed a ban on the manufacture and sale and possession of all handguns. He's endorsed a ban on the sale and transfer of all semi-automatic firearms. He backed a 500% increase in the federal excise tax on guns and ammunition. That's $350 federal tax on a $500 rifle. He voted to ban single shot and over and under side by side shotguns. He said the right to lawful citizens to carry a firearm for personal protection should be banned nationwide in every single state in this country. He even supported and prohibited Americans from keeping guns in their own homes for self-defense. He was one of only 11 legislators in the Illinois legislature to vote to prosecute a homeowner that was in his home in the middle of the night, some criminal with an arrest record as long as your arm breaks in the house. The homeowner had all the legal permits except when that town passed a complete gun ban, the homeowner kept the gun. Well, the homeowner saved his family with that gun. And there was a vote in the Illinois legislature on whether he ought to be prosecuted. President Obama, he voted to prosecute the homeowner. If that doesn't tell you the lack of judgment, the lack of really common sense understanding of what real people all over this country feel, I don't know what does. He did all those things when he thought gun owners didn't matter. He, never, he thought he'd never need him for an election. That's where, and I know you all remember it, that's where cling to your guns and religion came from. But you know what? We do matter. And NRA is going to go across this country and tell the truth about the danger Barack Obama poses to our freedom. We won't back down, I promise you this. And on election day, gun owners will be heard loud and clear all over this country. Americans must know the truth because the truth is the Obama administration has endangered our freedom, our nation, and our very lives. The Obama administration claims the southern border is safe. They aren't telling the truth, but we are. Please watch this. I know that border, I think, as well as, as anyone. We turn on the TV and Janet Napolitano says... It is as secure now as it has uh, ever been. My, my question. Senator, please. In my opinion, it's borderline treason. The traffic through here, unstoppable. The agents, we don't have enough. Oh, absolutely. I carry a gun everywhere I go. We're looking at human smuggling, drugs, terrorists coming across our property. From Syria from Iran, from Turkey, from China. My wife comes home from the grocery store and a woman's head is in the front yard. Is this America or is this Iraq? National security should not be a political game. And these jokers make it just that. For us and my family, our safe ha haven has been destroyed. And that is unforgivable. And I don't know how this government is ever gonna give that back to me. To slap in the face of the citizens of this great country of ours, to slap in the face the people that have fought for this flag that we represent. I fear for my grandchildren what they are going to be left with. It's our right to being stripped on a day-to-day -day basis. Angry? You betcha. Surprised? No. No president who has the best interest of this nation as a nation as it was created would ever, ever do something like this. These guys ought to be criminally tried for what they're doing in this nation. At the border, Barack Obama's failed. And he's using that failure to try to impose more gun control laws on the American public. But even worse, his failure endangers Americans all over this country. I've been out there with the SWAT teams in Arizona, out there in the desert. You get out there in the desert with them, and the first thing they say is, they're watching us right now. And I say, what do you mean they're watching us? And they say, the drug cartels. They control the high ground all the way to the Mexican border. That's 70 miles inside the United States. And the drug cartels, we're letting them control the high ground. These law enforcement guys have codes with their wives where they're, if they're in a supermarket 
and they say a certain word, it means the drug cartels are in the supermarket, inside the United States. The president won't tell you anything like that, but the NRA will. Take a look. It's money. It's criminality. It's the cartel. They're here. We have strengthened border security beyond what many believed was possible. This is not just a border issue. America's at stake. I say it's as secure as it's ever been. We are outmanned. We are outgunned. It's just become an invisible force. You can't see it, but it's there. It's upon us. The U.S. now a crossroads in Mexico's brutal drug war. Federal agents say the cartels have infiltrated more than a thousand cities across this country. They have a very, very detailed uh, network. They're set up in North Carolina. And the Sonola cartel is in Alamance County. That's why the federal government has designated our area a high-intensity drug area. Another major hub for the cartels, Ohio. Ohio has become a distribution point for the Mexican cartels. They have their foothold here. And also Galax, Virginia, known as a fiddler's paradise, is now also home to the cartels. To be perfectly frank, we're out of sight, out of mind. It's just a great place to hide. Sheriff Terry Johnson drove us throughout his county showing us where the cartels are entrenched, operating right next door to many mom and pop shops. But they really just try to blend, don't they? Oh, yes, and do a good job at it. Yeah, send a little cartel for a whole meeting on what's coming into town, what's going out of town. Right there. Right there. Just about every Friday night, we have uh, sources that are keeping us updated on it. Not insane to think it, but we're in the heartland of the U.S. and uh, drug trafficking organizations. Consider this a main pipeline or corridor. You know, you'll arrest somebody and they come back out and assume another identity and they don't care, they don't have any fear. They have more sophisticated equipment and radio system than we do in law enforcement. You can't win a war like that. Most of my officers now are wearing full body armor, running the squad rifles and the additional weapon systems just in case we confront the drug cartel. It frights me. I don't know whether they're living next door to me. Those are the people that are buying guns to protect their families because they feel that our nation is not protecting them. What's at stake is our way of life as we know it. It's not a political issue. It's a national security issue. You know, I was out with the California Fish and Game guys. They're now wearing SWAT gear because the drug cartels are setting up massive marijuana growing operations in all those mountains in California. I was in Nashville, I pick up the Nashville paper. Front page, drug cartels flood Nashville with heroin. Most politicians won't tell you the truth about what's going on with the invasion of these drug cartels in every American city. And they threaten Americans all over this country. The national media has virtually ignored the story, just as most of the media has ignored the Obama administration's massive cover-up of what I believe is the biggest scandal we've had since Watergate in this country. Watch the video again. Guys who I consider American heroes, my friends, they've told me since this broke, Carlos, I'm ashamed to carry an ATF badge. But rather than meet the wolf head on, we sharpened his teeth. All the while, we sat idly by watching as he became a more efficient and effective predator. It looks like the agency was doing this on purpose. The government actually encouraged gun dealers to sell multiple firearms to known and suspected traffickers. It's inconceivable that you would let weapons walk. We were giving guns to people who were killing other humans. That is insane. Brian Terry is dead today because of Fast and Furious. The ATF screwed up. It's up to the ATF to follow up to see who's the, really the money behind it. And that's the ball that got dropped. ATF claims its strategy was to let the guns walk, track them across the border, and then take down a major drug cartel, but keep it all a secret from the Mexican government. It was a strategy doomed to fail from the start. They would call the ATF and say there's a suspicious sale going on here. And Carter's country would have acted on that suspicion and not gone through with the sales, except that they were encouraged 
to go through with the sales by the ATF agents. I have complete confidence in Attorney General Holder. He's indicated that he was not aware of what was happening in Fast and Furious. Certainly, I was not. I did not know about Fast and Furious till it became public. And I did not know about Fast and Furious. I first heard of those allegations when the ATF agents went public. I learned about it from the press. Have you spoken to the Attorney General of Mexico about Fast and Furious? I don't believe so. We have a dead Border Patrol agent in Agent Terry. We have 2,000 missing guns. We have 200 deaths in Mexico. And you've never spoken to any one of these people about this operation. Would you like to apologize to the family of Brian Terry? I, I certainly regret what happened to Agent Brian Terry. It is not fair, however, to assume that the mistakes that happened in Fast and Furious directly led to the death of Agent Terry. Yeah, I know. Even after being caught red-handed arming violent drug gangs, no one at the Justice Department has been held accountable. They're trying to sweep it all under the rug. But we can't let that happen. Watch the video again. We're now two years later, and your agents have told us you knowingly let guns walk. Are they lying, or are you lying? Sir, in this investigation, it is my opinion that we did not let guns walk. You're entitled to your opinion, not to your facts. In this case, we have the ATF trafficking guidelines and best practices, and we just threw it out the window. How can you let somebody buy 730 guns? Nobody got stopped. Who defined the strategy for Fast and Furious? Well, uh, who is that one person? I, I don't know. We don't know. Because the inspector general is looking at it, we still don't know who knew what when and who made the decisions. So you can imagine my surprise. When I discovered the head of the criminal division, Lanny Brewer, had known as far back as April 2010 about gun walking at ATF, I was astounded. But that secret wasn't exposed until documents released by DOJ showed Brewer's staff sent a letter to Senator Grassley February 4th, falsely claiming that allegations that ATF let guns walk were untrue. He was sent versions of the letter four times. And he also forwarded one of those to his personal email account. But when Brewer was questioned about it under oath, he conveniently forgot. I cannot say for sure uh, whether I saw a draft of the letter that was sent to you. But lying to Congress is a federal felony. Obviously, there have been statements so misleading that a letter had to be withdrawn. I think that some heads should roll. It is unheard of for letters or testimony to be taken back. They've had to be taken back because of people who still work for justice. Well, first, let me make something very clear. The letter was withdrawn because there's information in there that was um, inaccurate. OK, well, tell, tell me what's the difference between lying and misleading Congress. Nobody in the Justice Department has lied. The American people need the truth. If we don't get to the bottom of this, there is only one alternative that Congress has, and it's called impeachment. We have 50-plus members of Congress calling for your resignation over this. I have no intention of resigning. You know what? None of them will admit is this whole operation was about designed to advance their gun ban agenda. They didn't tell the Mexican authorities they were doing it. They didn't tell our own law enforcement officers in Mexico they were doing it. They were just sending thousands and thousands of guns over to the cartels. And when they'd show up at crime scenes, they go, aha, guns from the United States. We need more gun control laws in the US. That's what they were doing over and over and over again to give some lie to that 90%, some truth to that 90% soundbite that was never true that the cartels were getting their guns from the U.S. NRA is exposing their scheme. Again, watch the video. You screwed up. You ought to admit you screwed up, but you ought not to use your screw up for trying to extend your legislative agenda. But this ATF memo shows that's exactly what they were looking at doing, to use Fast and Furious to justify a new law requiring gun dealers along the border to report anyone buying multiple long guns over a one-week period. Are you aware of this memo, July 14th, 2010? No, I'm not aware of it. 
Safety Field Operations Assistant Director Mark Shea at uh, emailed Bill Noel. Bill, we're looking at anecdotal cases to support a demand letter on long gun sales. The notion that somehow this operation was used to justify the request for that regulation is simply not accurate. You're taking a memo and taking it, I think, out of context. The administration's actions aren't just wrong, they are arrogant, undemocratic, in an effort to impose their agenda on the American people. It shows politics and ideology, I think, driving law enforcement. That is dangerous. I'm not surprised, given it's the ATF. It has always been a rogue agency. They wanted to prove that there were guns flowing to Mexico, so they set up an illegal pipeline. When does it stop being law enforcement and start being a criminal enterprise? Innocent people are dying. This is one of the most shameful moments, I think, in our government's history. For the sake of everything that we love in this country, if we don't change presidents in 2012, this nation will be relegated to a second-rate power in the not-too-distant future. As you know, the House of Representatives voted yesterday to hold the Attorney General in contempt of Congress. Yeah. It's about time. But this scandal is far from over. I guarantee you that there's something that stinks to high heaven in those papers in order for this administration to be willing to walk into this briar patch. Executive privilege really is the last gasp of a cover-up. And the president, he has only two choices. Either order everyone in his administration to come clean and tell the truth, or become a part of that cover-up. He chose executive privilege. He chose the Richard Nixon option to cover it up until after the coming election. No one died as a result of Watergate. Yet several members of Nixon's cabinet and staff went to prison. In fact, were it not for Gerald Ford's pardon, Nixon himself may have faced federal prosecution. A U.S. Border Patrol agent is dead. Another two to three hundred Mexican citizens are dead. Hundreds more innocent lives in Mexico and the United States may be lost in the next several decades, all because of Operation Fast and Furious. But no one's been held accountable, and the only action Obama has taken is to invoke executive privilege, just like Nixon, to hide from public view what he wants no one to see. If Barack Obama, like Richard Nixon, is actively participating in a cover-up, he's committing a crime, the same crime Nixon committed. And just like Nixon, this president has put his administration in the same state of vulnerability, at the edge of a federal penitentiary. The truth will come out, and then we'll all know which members of the media have served Obama as enablers of the cover-up. I'll tell you this, the way the media has covered this, Edward R. Murrell would throw his typewriter out the window. It's a sad day in this country. Even as the Obama administration, though, was secretly covering up and arming Mexican drug cartels, it was also conspiring with the world's dirty, handed thug governments to destroy our Second Amendment by treaty. Take a look at this. It's a stealth operation. I mean, I used to say the UN complex, it was like going into the twilight zone. The majority of the countries that are members of the UN and who think the UN is just a wonderful entity, that it's something that we should listen to, they are not democracies. I'm sitting up there and I'm looking out and there I see the Sudan and I see Cuba and I see Syria and I'm thinking, you gotta be kidding me. You're gonna come into our country and try to eliminate our constitutional right to own a firearm? Dream on. We Americans are not gonna let that happen. But the UN feels more empowered than ever to get its global arms trade treaty passed now that President Obama has dramatically reversed U.S. policy 
and signed on as a partner in the UN's mission to trample our firearm freedoms. The United States stands ready to begin a new chapter of international cooperation. Now, the UN remains the single most important global institution. I think that the president really sees himself as a citizen of the world. And a fellow citizen of the world. He would fit in very well as a leader of a European social democratic party. He doesn't believe in American exceptionalism. He clearly has no respect for the rule of law our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, because he's constantly taking steps that have hurt American sovereignty. He sees in arms trade treaties a way to get around the American Congress when the American voters don't go the way he wants. And in that sense, I think he's post-American. I went to New York and looked that UN committee right in the eye and told them they had no authority whatsoever to mess with our Constitution and Bill of Rights, no way, no how. Please watch. Neither the United Nations nor any other foreign influence has the authority to meddle with the freedoms guaranteed by our Bill of Rights, endowed by our Creator and due to all humankind. That message delivered by the NRA has been strongly supported by 58 U.S. Senators who sent this letter to President Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, warning them that an arms trade treaty that in any way restricts the rights of law-abiding American gun owners would be dead on arrival. I hope as Americans we join together with a firm resolve that we are never going to let that body infect our freedoms. That's one reason I think 